In the first Equalizer film, we are introduced to Robert McCall. Robert lives in a modest apartment, works at a home mart, and has an odd habit of timing his common activities on his wristwatch. He is also constantly reading a new book. He's working his way through a hundred books that his deceased wife read. He seems like a regular guy, but he's not. He's an ex-DIA operative who faked his own death after his wife passed away to get out of the business. He's not all the way out, though. Whenever somebody in his orbit is being harassed, bullied, intimidated, or threatened, he deals with the situation. Hence the movie title, The Equalizer. The first person he aids is Terry. Terry is a sex worker who is being trafficked by the Russian mob. McCall walks her home one night, and the Russians pull up to them in a car and drag Terry into the vehicle while pointing a gun at McCall. McCall later hears from his favorite diner owner, whose establishment he goes to every night, that Terry is in the ICU. He runs into Terry's friend Mandy, who is also working for the Russians, when he goes to the hospital. He learns from her that a man named Slavi did this to Terry, so McCall pays him a visit at his club. McCall offers Slavi $9,800 to let Terry go, but this insults Slavi, so he tells him to get the hell out. Not the best decision on Slavi's part. Bad move. McCall isn't happy about this, so he locks the door and he turns on his heightened abilities, which seems like a combination of Spider Sense and Terminator scanning the area. An unarmed McCall says 60 seconds to himself, and he takes out five heavily armed men in 28 seconds. This is kind of a problem for McCall, because the head of the Russian Mafia, Vladimir Pushkin, sends his top assassin slash fixer slash sociopath, Teddy, to take care of the situation. McCall isn't sweating it, though. Not a problem. Teddy begins putting together the pieces as to who killed Slavi after getting some information from Mandy before killing her. McCall is not too worried about the situation with the Russians, so he plays a little softball and he helps out his friend and co-worker Ralphie. Ralphie's mother is being extorted by some crooked cops, and Robert beats them up a bit and shows them he has video of them doing so. So the two men dutifully return the money they have extorted. The situation becomes real for McCall when Teddy is able to track him down at his home, and he poses as a cop. McCall is able to sniff out the fact that this guy is no cop. After the interaction, Teddy knows this is the man he's looking for. Teddy tries to abduct McCall at his favorite diner, and Robert immediately recognizes a man posing as an electrical worker is there for him. Not fooling anyone. McCall makes quick work of the guy and casually walks toward the SUV with Teddy and his men in it. He takes a few pictures of them before running down the alley. Robert is able to escape after killing one of the men. The Russians then go to his home, but he isn't there. McCall has cameras around the home so he can watch them. He also plants some evidence alluding to the fact that he left for Mexico. Teddy doesn't fall for this though, and he knows McCall is watching them. McCall feels like he needs to get some information about who he's dealing with with Teddy. So he goes to see his friend Susan Plummer, who's from the same agency that McCall worked for. She's still active, and she gives him information about Teddy and Vladimir Pushkin. McCall shows up at police officer Frank Masters' home to get more information because Masters is working with Teddy. He puts Masters in his car with a hose running from the exhaust into the cab. Masters eventually breaks and leads McCall to one of Pushkin's money laundering operations. McCall also convinces Masters to give him his back door, which is a safety deposit box. McCall shows up at a restaurant where Teddy is eating, and he says he'll break him down brick by brick unless Pushkin shuts down his operation in the area. Teddy asks McCall what he sees when he looks at him, and McCall tells him a story about Teddy's childhood. He was adopted by a kind, rich man, and that man was killed in a robbery, but McCall says he thinks the boy did it, who is Teddy. McCall looks at the information on the thumb drive provided by Master's safety deposit box, and he sends the information to FBI agent Mosley. On the thumb drive is information about bribes going all the way up to the U.S. Senate. McCall is also using information from the drive to locate and blow up an oil tanker owned by Pushkin. Teddy at this point calls McCall on the phone, and he tells him that he's holding all of McCall's co-workers from Home Mart hostage. McCall shows up at Home Mart and he kills all of Teddy's men, leaving him for last. He takes Teddy out with a nail gun before leaving the scene. After he finishes with Teddy, he shows up at Pushkin's compound in Russia. Robert surprises Pushkin coming out of the shower. McCall leaves the sink running and Pushkin goes to turn it off and he's electrocuted. In the final scene, we learn that Terry lived because McCall gave her money to get out of town while he dealt with the Russian Mafia. He gave her the $9,800 he offered to Slavi at his club. Equalizer 2 begins on a Turkish railway train 400 miles from Istanbul. McCall, disguised as a devout Muslim, follows a man into the bar car. This man took his own daughter away from his ex-wife who lives in the United States. He gives the guy a choice to do the right thing, but the man declines. So McCall starts his stopwatch, cues up the spider sense, and takes his men out. The child is returned to the overjoyed mother immediately. McCall is now a Lyft driver, and he lives in a different apartment. 
He helps a couple of passengers along the way, including a woman who is abused by some of her co-workers. Around the same time in Brussels, we see a Belgian man named Mr. Calbert return home from work. He works for the DIA with McCall's friend Susan. A group of men are holding his wife hostage. They shoot his wife and then they make him hold the gun to his own head and shoot himself. One of the men in the group tells him he's just a name on a piece of paper. And that's all he knows about him, making this seem like a private contract. When McCall goes back to his apartment, he finds his friend Susan in his place. She visits McCall on his deceased wife's birthday every year. It seems like she is one of the only people who really knows him, and she is his best friend. At this point, we are introduced to Miles. He's a high schooler who lives in McCall's building, and Robert is trying to make sure he's able to pursue his dream of becoming an artist, instead of ending up selling drugs. The DIA is forced to investigate the death of Mr. Calvert. Susan and David York go to Belgium to look into the issue. After leaving the crime scene, Susan goes to her hotel room, and she's ambushed by two men who beat her to death. Just like Mr. Calvert, the motives are unclear as to why this is happening. This, however, didn't look like a professional hit like the other murder. Robert receives a call from Brian about Susan's death. The agency tells Brian that they are working hard to find out what happened, but it isn't good enough for McCall. He begins looking into the murder himself. Back in Brussels, the men who killed Susan are killed in a building explosion triggered by a man who calls them on a cell phone. They look like drug addicts who were hired to do the job and then killed afterwards. McCall reconnects with David while David is out running in the park. David and McCall used to work together at the DIA. Dave thought McCall was dead. He was actually in the same building collapse, which was thought to have killed Robert. McCall tells David that he reviewed the hotel security camera footage, and Susan never pushed the button for her floor. The two men that killed her pushed it for her. He says this means that they knew the floor she was on. McCall also shows David the autopsy, which shows a stab wound in her chest. He says this means it wasn't just a robbery, but it was staged, and someone who'd been trained may have come into the building after the two men left and finished the job. Sometime later, McCall picks up a lift ride, which tries to stab him with a knife. McCall breaks the guy's arm while driving, and he takes his gun away from him and shoots him. He leaves the guy in the trunk of the car after getting his fingerprints, and he lights his car on fire. McCall knows that David was behind this, and he shows up at his home. McCall knows for sure he did it, because he took the guy's cell phone who tried to kill him, and David's number is on the phone as somebody he talked with. We see in a flashback that David was actually the one who stabbed Susan after the two men left the hotel. Dave reveals to McCall that a lot of the guys on his former team make up a private hit squad David is working with. McCall is able to get away from David's men by getting a ride with his wife, who isn't aware of who her husband really is. McCall goes to Brian's home and rescues him because he's a loose end. As a result of this, McCall isn't home when Dave's men show up at his apartment. Miles happens to be there doing some painting work for McCall and he calls McCall when David's men show up. McCall tells him to get in a secret room behind a bookcase. He does go in there, but he exits too early when he thinks the men have left and they get a hold of him. Dave puts Miles in his trunk and he drives to McCall's old home on the coast. He brings his entire team with him, but it doesn't matter much because McCall deals with all of them before moving on to Dave. Robert ends up killing him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. If you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.